Like where he's like, I've never seen a white dude this big. <laughs> and that, and everything after that, that's straight up. Well, even, the, even he's like, even when I'm like pure chalk. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's where I was like, why is this Kendall? And as he kept talking, like this is more and more Kendall. I was like, this is pure. I just said, I'm my chest. <laughs> so, so the running back run past me. I was at my helmet retired that day. I'm like, I like, became an actor that same day. <laughs> I'm like all genius, everything you asked me, Coda, I got it. And then I go, and then I learned Java. And then yeah. I just, I retired on him back to that tick. It was like basketball. Uh, Jordan and JB saw that I was playing a team where their average height was taller than me, and I uh, immediately quit. No, <laughs> it's like a, it's like when you talk about your St. Lawrence story, and you're like, yeah, we went to this place in Oakland. They had all black dudes. We were gonna get our ass. No, no, okay. Uh, that's still that's still the most fucked thing in the world. Cause you come, you get, you have this D five school, right? Like this D five school in San Jose, right? Where like nobody, nobody's like, nobody's like San Jose pumps out quality athlete, you know? What I mean? like, like St. Lawrence is known for the professional athletes that made it. St. <laughs> Lawrence, St. Lawrence's main main like sport was cross country. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like, about right. Sounds like, about right. We had we had really good endurance. Not, not, not hand, no hand coordination, nothing. You guys are the guys that would take slaps and just get smacked. You're like, oh, I'm back up. Fuck you. I'm here. Right. <laughs> like we had. A, Hey, you, we should start. You just straight yeah. up. You guys are straight up like a. You guys are Austin without the plot armor. Dude, <laughs> you just smack down. You're like, no, I'm still here. But you guys do not have anything special going on. <laughs> yeah. no, guys, we don't have like anti magic in the world. Right? We don't have like one skill that like no one else has. It's just a bunch of regular ass people going. We can keep trying. That's our yeah. our special power. No, you are you're the uh, human rider from from a. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a like, C class hero. C but I'm a proud C class hero. I got this. <laughs> end of the day, hero bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, at the end of the day, I still get a paycheck. <laughs> no, like, genuinely, we had a, ba- a baseball team that went undefeated two years in a row. Not a single one of those guys got recruited. For, <laughs> one type. One. Addison. Addison got recruited for baseball. <laughs> and now he's a professional body lecturer. So, like, you see where that goes. Right? Like, Listen, <laughs> I I talk a big game about myself <laughs> all day, not stop. Like I'll always be like, listen, you may be smart, but you ain't me. <laughs> we all know. We all know what I'm saying. You ain't me. <laughs> but you ain't me. Like I'm gonna get. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna step my foot in that door, and then I'm gonna get fucking trampled. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you know, they had us in the first half. Probably gonna have us in the second half. <laughs> Like a line that got us the first half, and uh, it ain't gonna look so good to say I have it. Like, like you know that video where it's like, not gonna lie, they had us in the first half, right? I would have been like, they probably gonna have us in the second half. But guess what? You're interviewing me. Yeah. That means I'm winning. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's, that's exactly what you're like. They had the team, but I mean, like me all day long, I got them beat. But like, it's it's eleven people out there, so like. Numbers See aren't on my side. See this? Not just everybody can do the tough mutter, right? Everybody can do the tough mutter. <laughs> like you try to be special to be able to handle this. But well, that's how I am. It's like that for every I mean, again, my own thing, 
my life is like, if you look at One Piece, right? I've been, I've been doing a lot of thinking because I'm looking at One Piece and I'm like, I'm so mad they didn't drop an episode, like a, uh, a chapter this week. Chapter. Oh, dude, I, I'm right there with you. Well, like I've been looking at it and I'm like, I'm like, see, you know what, Luffy, Luffy from the get, five years old, I'm gonna be pirate kid, and then just didn't give a fuck about anything. Well, that was the thing though too, is like as he was growing up. Got smacked up by his grandpa, by his brother, by Sabo, who was like by, a his brother. By the like, fucking guardian that like, he was with. Yeah. Literally, no matter who he came up to, he was just like, fuck it, put you back into your place. He's still like, bitch, I am gonna be tired of right. still. He's like, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be that guy. And now I'm like looking at it, sorry, Cassie, Cassie doesn't get how much shit Luffy is like actually done. Like, like over his career. Like, people are always all like, Oh yeah, the worst generation. Listen, Kid Law, they're cool. Their abilities are dope. Luffy, Luffy showed up, literally went, got captured, put into that prison. They put the other fucking pirates in. Every other pirate they meet, they put them in that prison, right? They captured everybody else. Logia types, everything, right? He went to that prison. He broke out of that prison. Basically, walked up to the White House's front lawn and took a shit and then <laughs> left. Like, like, you know, like he literally, he literally just been out here. He's like, uh, miss me with that gay shit. With, and you're like, what gay shit? The law? Well, here's the thing too. Is like, if you, if you think about it, if you look at his life career of wins and losses and fights, yeah. I guarantee you, he has a shit ton more losses than does, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. if we include his like kid Luffy and like all the losses he took against Sabo and fucking Ace. In, the, in his childhood, mm-hmm. that enough is like going to be 20 times over however many wins he has, but the magnitude of the wins he has now overtakes like, yeah. the, the, it's like quality over quantity in that sense. Right. Because like, because like he should, because it's not, it's a thing in One Piece. He shows up and he's all like, fuck you. And then somebody clocks his ass. Yeah. <laughs> he hits the floor and he's like, oh, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah. And then he fucking rocks him. Well, like, like, if, but like, I've been thinking about it because I'm like, I want to be that. You know what I mean? I want to be able to look myself in the mirror and go, this is what you said you wanted. And this is what you're going to get. Not, okay, I'm going to be an inventor. Five years go by. Oh, oh God. Okay. I'm going a, I'm to a try. I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to start my own company. Five more years go by. All right, I need an internship. <laughs> you know, give me an idea. Give me the yeah, like, Give me, give me the will to live for just for just two months. <laughs> and then I'll figure it out from there. Like that's that's Luffy. Where. So it's funny because Luffy, I feel like is he's that annoying guy who's like who's like you had us in the first half, but we better have you in the second half. Right. Even the second half, go go. Well, we're going to the surge now. <laughs> Best two out of three, bitch. Right, like, yeah, we're, we're, we're going best, to the overrides. Best three out of five. Like, that's the thing. It's like an attitude thing where it's like the villain's always like, I just don't even want this guy to win once. If he wins once, my pride is shot. No, but like, you know, like, who is just like, I got your pride here. I'll take it out and I'll come right back. Everyone else is like, once I take it out, I don't care anymore. I'm done. It's over with. No, like, I think that's how it is, though. Because, like, basically, everybody, like, everybody knows fucking like crocodile. I was gonna or, say, like, like Alabasta, how many times did he lose crocodile? Like so many. It was times. twice. Yeah. It was twice and then he finally got him in the third. Right? Right. And then same with like uh, same with like if no I held down with like the C P nine arc, right? Like mm-hmm. and he's laughing and all that. He's like gets smacked down by someone else fucking he's like, alright, yeah, like, yeah, I'm about to level yeah. up real quick. He yeah. beats that gets beat up again. He's like, okay, I guess I gotta fucking step up one more fucking time. Like I would get it. Like, everyone gets annoyed with those people. The people that are fucking, that take the fucking punches and run, run, still run right through you afterwards. But, but like, that's what Luffy is. Like, oh, Luffy's, yeah. Luffy's whole thing is like, I don't care if I lose. That's the fact. Yeah, he's like, fact. like, if I lose, I can just bounce. I, I'm, you are not, <laughs> you are not my enemy here. It's, it's like, for him, it's like most recent. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like, overall, it's like, yeah, you might have beaten me a hundred times, but who got the, who got the most recent one? Right. Who's in their peak at the, at the, you know, who's uh, at their most peak right now? I am. Yeah. Because I beat you in the most recent battle. Right. Regardless yeah. of everything, I beat you in the most recent. Like, when he beats Kaido, when, technically when he beats Kaido, right, high key, Kaido should be able to just get the fuck back up and be like, oh, damn. Yeah, I'll, I'll, see you you get, I'll see you again in a week. Right. right. You know, I'm yeah. about to come at you again, boy. Right, no, but Kaido's about to hit the floor and be like, ah, uh, 
I'm so old. <laughs> this is like, I've been doing this for so long, and this fucking kid is going to beat me out of nowhere. All right, you know what? <laughs> I know, he's fine. He's good. I feel like that's going to be, and he's like, fucking, finally. Right. He's, like, he's the guy, and he's like, who's either like on the basketball court, who hasn't lost, but is so fucking tired of winning. They're like, please, just give me something. Right. At least, at least give me a win that's worth winning at this point. Everything is like, fucking, it's like 21, 21, six foot, you're a 21 year old. Like six foot six basketball players are getting playing like it's like middle school. Right? right, yeah. Like, give me competition. Right. right. That's all they want. Genuinely childhood. That's the same with like Cat and Curry. Right. Yeah. I think this is, that's like the case for a lot of things. You know, if you want people to like challenge you. Like, if I was playing a video game and I was playing against someone, like, if we playing Mario Party. Yeah. And we play easy computers all the time. Yeah. It would get so fucking boring. Yeah, you'd be like, you'd be why? having like 10 stars, 300 coins, and nobody. Uh, Dude, no one's enjoying it. Right. You're you know? just like, okay, let's can we move on? Like I already won. Like yeah. we're done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same thing like in a, like the same thing in like reality, like the strong like, if you ever watch strong that same thing. Like, people people do the competitions and they have just like in Mario Party, you have records to break. Yeah. Right? But no one has a good time breaking that record playing against easy components. You wanna get pushed to break Right. That like you wanna you wanna literally see someone break that record before you even stood up yeah. to try and break that record, right? Yeah. Because you, you're the one you want to challenge, right? You don't want to be like Pirate King because it was too easy. Right. You know? Yeah, you don't want to be Pirate King because everybody retired. Right? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Pirate King. Yeah, I'll just wait this one out, guys. I'll just... right. Don't worry, I got like 50 more years. They'll die eventually. I'll just sit. Sit. I'm waiting. Right. Patience. Patience. And like, high key, high key, if once Luffy kicks Kaido's ass right here, right? It'll be, it'll be game changing. Because not only did he beat Kaido, right? It was, it's... Him, Kid, Law, Unified to beat Kaido and Big, Big Mom, Mom. Yeah. Alliance, yes. right? He wipes them out in one goes, half the, that's half the Emperors of the Sea in one fight. Well, man, and yeah, remember too, like, it's the youthfulness too, right? Like, if Kaido took it, if Kaido, if Kaido claimed himself Pirate King, right? Yeah. Like, he's already in, like, an older age, like, look how old, look how old, uh, old Whitebeard was. Yeah. I mean, like, that fool was literally, like, Colossal, like, he didn't have like, colossal, like, right? he was like, goddamn just, near. Like he had like the fucking those tubes up his nose. Right, and he was literally just got, like all my stuff. Got IV drips. Like, yeah. yeah. He literally went to Marine Corps. Like I think this is my final one. I don't want to fucking do this anymore. <laughs> right, like no, like I he, he showed up. He was all like, listen, I just I just need to rescue my kid real quick. That was it. He was like, I'm gonna rescue Ace, and then I'm gonna die. And then Ace died. He was like, all right, I'm done. Guys. Well, I think that was the thing too. Like that whole that whole scene was kind of like. Like if I was gonna give it to anybody, I think I think it'd be great if Marco and Ace ran like ran the crew. Yeah. Or those two, the one and two, like they'll become like co-captains. Yeah. You know, and then one once like one dad is like, yeah, white big pirates are good. I mean, we're good. Like it's over with. We lost two of our main homies. Like it ain't happening anymore. Right. Well, like and I, and that's kind of what happened. Like Marco really could have stood up and been like, all right, guys, let's run this back. Let's reorganize. Keep moving forward. But but really, they were just everybody in the White Bear Pirates were just there so they could you know serve under Whitebeard. And then once Whitebeard was gone, everybody went all right. The division captains went. Let's just take our boat. Let's just sail the seas, be free, and just do our own thing. But like Marco was like, nah, I think I'm gonna just look after what I'm gonna look after this kid over here. Yeah, I'm just gonna look over. It, it became a thing too where Whitebeard wanted the best for his crewmates. But a lot of the division captains were only looking out for them, like for each other, the yeah, division captains, yeah. and and uh, and Whitebeard mainly, right? Mm -hmm. So like, like fucking the diamond dude, right? He didn't he didn't really give too much. Like, it wasn't like, oh dude, he's like a fucking homie with Ace and fucking Mark. No, 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 like, no, like, nah, this fool is coming in clutch to protect Whitebeard. Right. Like, he's like, he's like yeah. coming in with a fucking like football linebacker kind of fucking tackle. Against Aokiji, right? No, against, no, he, uh, against the Mihawk. ice user. Well, and Mihawk too, yeah. but like Aokiji literally like, like appears right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. just like bitch. Yeah, like, he just bodies it. He just goes like, that was good. Nah, son. It was good. Oh, dude, that's see, like, and like that's why I'm, that's why I like still though, like Whitebeard from the get won an MVP, an MVP without question. But once he was gone, everybody went ah. They were like, where do we focus our energy to? Because, like, not that I don't hate you guys, but, like, my loyalty was to my homie, to, to fucking my dad over here. Right, yeah. Now that he's gone, and his one of his beloved sons is gone, like, 
we're kind of, we gotta dismantle this bitch. Like, I'm gonna go do my own thing. Marco's just like, sorry, Marco had like that look where he was like, white beard and Ace see something in this rubber little fuck. Let's see where this takes me. I'll be re- like, Marco gives me solid Silver Rayleigh vibes, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, like, because he shows up only to basically be like, Nah, I'm, I'm gonna watch out. Mark was just there to like keep things, like keep the chaos going. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna control the chaos just a little bit, but I want to see it unfold. I want to witness. But that what makes happened. sense though, because he showed up. He showed up. Luffy showed up with the biggest balls ever conceived. Oh fuck yeah! And went went to Marine Fort and said, "You hold on a second. I'm gonna kick your ass, Whitebeard. Just to let you know, I'm gonna be king of pirates. You got a problem?" He was like. <laughs> Bro, I, I didn't want to be king of pirates. Yeah. <laughs> go, go for it, bro. So literally, he stood up with Whitebeard, told him, hey, I'm going to be Gold Roger, all right? I'm going to be better than Gold Roger, right? I'm going to be better than Joy Boy, right? I'm going to be the best, okay, Whitebeard? You hear me, Whitebeard? I'm going to be the best. And Whitebeard went, sure, kid. Why don't you stand right here next to me because clearly you deserve it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really funny because I, I, I've always chimed in that I have this game I can play. It's like, again, it's one of the things that I just do past the time. But like, same kind of development, like as it was with One Piece in a weird way, like the early parts of the games, there was like the gaps of levels where like you couldn't tell except for like, oh, this person has like, can throw three heroes in a, in a battle and these people can throw two. So obviously they're going to wreck shop, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like the white beards and the fucking Mihawks and the red and the... Yeah, like that uh, gap right yeah. between where you And the movie was like that. The strongest two hero guy. Right, right. right. He was like, he was like... Right. He was the one that was like, bitch, I'm going to be here. I'm going to fucking come for the fucking crown. You already know. Right. And everyone was just like, I see something in this kid, even though he's like a little fucking bitch right now. Right. I can see this kid being something big. Now it's like, like I said, in the game it's gotten to like a more meta late game, so everybody has like, everybody's all stacked up on hockey and like, right, yeah, like, like everyone has like, now it's just a matter of like, who built the smartest and like, who's the most strategic and who's the fucking, who's not gonna give up kind of thing. Right, it's yeah. Like, it's like, who basically has the willpower. As it literally to comes down to willpower, and that's what they, that's what they have. That's been like the teaser of things, right? It's like fucking Gold, Gold Roger never had like a, a devil fruit. Right. So then, then he became the king of pirates. And that was the thing. It's like, he could have the best devil fruit in the world, but it don't mean he's the king. Yeah, he's, he's literally. But like. He better fucking want that shit that badly. No, yeah. Like, but like, even if. Even if he wants to see it as badly as you want to breathe. <laughs> no, like, I, you know, right? I like, he was like, listen, straw hat. Cool run never had a devil fruit. So it's not all about if you got the sun god Nico power, alright? It's about how much you want it. Yeah, and, right. and, and high key, Luffy wants it more than Kaido. <laughs> he does like he just does. Like, like no no I Luffy wants it more than everybody else. Oh, that's just a yeah. fact. That's just a fact. Like like even Don Flamingo, because that's where Cassie's at, we're re I'm rewatching the um, the Don Flamingo art, right? And I'm looking at it and I was like, Don Flamingo doesn't want it. <laughs> Don mm-hmm. Flamingo's out here like, ah, I'm, I'm trying to play these games, right? Luffy ain't out here trying to play games. Luffy's out here trying to fuck Don Flamingo. Luffy's having a good time. No, that's like, exactly <laughs> it, too. Like, that's the thing is, like, Luffy's got one thing on his mind. Mm-hmm. Everything else is, like, side shit for him. Right, yeah. These are all side quests, like in Legend of Zelda. Yeah. These are all the side quests you do to just build your inventory and, like, get all the best weapons and, like, have the big, have the big Goron sword and all that shit, right? Right. Everyone <laughs> else is like... Like the villagers are like, oh, this is like the the uh, what is it, the water people or Zoras? Like this is the Zoras. Like they have their own kingdom. Let them be. Yeah. And Luffy's just literally Link. He's just like, I'm gonna walk in this bitch and make it mine. Right. Hey, what's the problem here? Uh, well, we got a tyrannical <laughs> dictator. Okay, bet I'm gonna fucking go kill this. I'm gonna go fucking conquer this dungeon real quick. I'm gonna kill that person. Cool. And I'm gonna go after the person that sent him. So let's go. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, I'm gonna do all these side quests and get you guys on my side. Not because not because I like y'all. And don't get me wrong, I don't hate y'all, but like you guys got things to offer. Right? <laughs> no, like you're right. I'm gonna take care of Fishman Island because I like y'all people. Right. Y'all can be nice, y'all different, you know, I like what you guys are doing here. You are like, fuck big mom, I'm gonna take that and take care of that bitch for you. Right, you know, like he was he was like he was like, ah, like, hey, I met your daughter, Shira Hoshi. She's fucking dope. What's good? Like she gave me all this food. Oh, fucking dope. Why 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 are people still kidnapping y'all if y'all protected or not? He goes, listen, Big Mom don't really give a fuck about us. He goes, oh big oh no? no? Hey, hey oh big mom, hey, fuck yourself. Fuck you and your candy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and fucking candy, right? 
Cinnamon <laughs> Pops Catch, Butterscotch, yum. Guess what? That's my second one. There's only ten left, and you ain't getting one. Right? Like, yeah, you know this candy you're supposed to get? I'm gonna take that shit. Oh, you know your flag? I use it to wipe my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, like, like, take this down, put this up, somebody fuck with you, give me a call, I'll be right here, alright? Peace. And then he fucks with everybody else. I can just see that he, like, goes to the bathroom quick. Hey, I think we're out of toilet paper. This straight mom's like, you're just like, you some. <laughs> right. Like, Heidi, Heidi, I'm just thinking, I'm just saying, like, Luffy out here, genuinely, what was I gonna say? He said, like, uh, I can't remember. Basically, basically, Luffy shows up, Luffy shows up and goes, why you gotta be a dick? Don't be a dick. I, we ain't got problems. You ain't a dick. I ain't gonna be a problem, right? Right? But then he shows up to Kaido, like Kaido's like, arm. Oh, by the way, that's all I was gonna say, right? He showed up here with Law, and Law was like, "You can help me kill Don Flamingo, and I'll help you with whatever you want." Yeah, you know? help you with. Yeah, <laughs> help me, help me fucking stop this bad. Like, Law was literally like, "Help me do good things, and I won't get in your way." Right. And he's like, alright, cool. He's like, and I won't, I won't try to become pirate king, but just help me with these fucking big ass problems. And it's I'll almost like you, right. it's almost like how we've been talking about like this was like a long time ago, and I'm still on that fucking hype. Me and Vanilla were talking about it earlier today, but it was like the app thing. Like, help me with this app. It's gonna benefit you, and I'll stay out of your lane. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can take pirate king all day long. We're gonna both fucking take this person out. You can have all the credit. I don't give a fuck. Right. I just want to see a change in the world. And I'll give you the credit. And right. you can take that and become fucking king of the pirates for all I give a fuck. Right. But get rid of these pieces of shit out of here. <laughs> no. Throw them like, into the ocean. No, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, he was like, and, but, but here's the other thing too, you gotta remember, the deal they made was, he was like, you help me take down Don Flamingo, I'll help you take down Shanks. Yeah, right. Like, I'll right. The deal right there is like, Don Flamingo is just a piece of shit. Shanks, who's basically the closest thing to Gold Roger that anybody's gonna get. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'll take that shank, yeah. sure. And he's like, no, no, this kind of thing like, is just. But that was the thing, it was like, I'll take, like, help me to defeat Don Flamingo. I got real fucking shit with him. And help me take out his supplier, right? Because Kaido was his supplier. Yeah. So like, let's, let's take out the guy who's been fucking yeah. with me the most, and the guy that put him into a position to fuck with me the most. And then at the same time, we'll just, like, Big Mom just have him cover the big. It just became a triple whammy right there. Big Mom just showed up. Big, okay, big Mom was just like, I'm a big them. bitch. Yeah. I'm gonna be a big bitch to you. And they were just like, you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna take this metal guy and we're just gonna handle it. You're right. We're about to fucking handle it. No, like, <laughs> like, and by the way, by the way, like, Luffy's beef wasn't even with Big Mom. Luffy's beef was with the Vin Smoke family, right? right. And they right. kidnapped Sanji. And then, and then when they showed up, Bajiz was out there like, hey, I heard you trying to fuck with Big Mom real quick. And he's like, not nah, really, I'm just trying to get my chef back. And he was like, well, check it yeah, out. Yeah, that's literally it. He's like, I don't give a fuck about this island or whatever. Like, yeah, I fucking told Big Mom to go suck a fucking dick. But at the same time, like, this ain't a battle I need to worry about. Right. I, I, I always. She great in this case. I'm just here for my homie. Right. And then. And fuck then, his family and fuck the people trying to, like, now it's becoming all politics and it's getting all ugly, so now I have to fucking step in. I don't want to. <laughs> right, like, even Johnny, he's like, wait a minute, so you tell me, like, where I can't just take my guy? Like, I gotta, I gotta fight Big Mom and I want my guy back? But that's how it is, <laughs> right? And how he was like, we can try. <laughs> I know, he was just like, I don't want to fucking handle this fight right now. Like, this wasn't on the list yet. I'll take her out when I'm ready, but, like... Right now, this ain't the, this ain't the time or place. Like fuck this shit. Like and I at the same time it. gets thrown into it. You know, you're just like, you know what? I'm gonna sideline. But you like pretty much was like, I'm gonna fucking sideline Zoro. I'm gonna take out my best. I'm gonna fucking run this show right here because I need everybody good for the fucking Kaido fight. Yeah. Like, 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 that's the big monster. Everyone else was like, you guys handle that. Set me up for when I get over there. I'm gonna handle this and take our number three back. Right. Like literally, literally, I thought it was gonna go kill Don Flamingo, go get Shanks. But it went, fuck up Don Flamingo, oh, Big Mom's fucking with your shit, and then Kaido's fucking with your shit. Because while you were while you were fucking with Don Flamingo, you found the son of the king of the fucking kingdom. And he's like, hey, I need your help real quick, and he's like, alright, alright, I help you out. I help you out. Well that was the thing too, is uh fucking movie, I mean I think the problem with the villains that they don't realize is they're like, you know, they're like, none of them had that like epiphany being like, I'm doing this to become the king of the pirates. They're just like, 
I hate you so much right now, Luffy. I might just want to become King of the Pirates. And then yeah. if I could, like, set this fire in him, they're like, I was okay with all the bullshit you were doing. I would have got to it eventually. But now that you want to take the title I'm coming for, fuck you. Yeah. And your crew. Right. And your family. And your kingdom. Fuck it all. Right. He was like, he's, he's only fighting fucking Kaido because genuinely they fuck with his people, right? Yeah. Like, they, like, they fuck with his homeboys. Yeah. Right? But Big Mom, he, he he wasn't even out there trying to kill Big Mom. Big Mom chased him. Yeah. <laughs> Big Mom was like, nah, I wasn't gonna try to go King Pirate. I wasn't gonna try to do nothing. You fuck with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not where I'll kick your ass. So he's like, all right, Big Mom, you can go ahead and try. <laughs> but I, I showed up to you, King. I did one thing nobody else ever said they were gonna do. Showed up, took out your number one fighter, right? Blew up your cake, poisoned your ass, ruined your way. <laughs> Shattered that picture of the person you love most in the world. Then I bounced. You know why? Because I'm just fucking with you. And then she showed up. He didn't even give her the time to take. He was like, oh, right. Big mom's here. The kid, bro, you got that? Yeah, okay, cool. Because I really don't got to eat this motherfucker. <laughs> I did like, like a freestyle rap. Like, fuck you. Hey, kid, lock. Head on my light work, bitch. Head on my light work. It was like, yeah, I don't even, I don't even need to drop you far right now. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Okay, I wanna I wanna switch gears right now. Yeah, I wanna ask you. So you remember? I saw the scene today. Like it, it just made me laugh. Cause we were talking last week. We were talking about or two weeks ago. Oh, we were getting about, we're getting, we're getting into, into the, the cartoons again, right? Okay, so let's get into this topic. Uh, so honestly, I, I I didn't think about it until we never brought it up, but it sparked a good, interesting conversation I had with a coworker yesterday. Because mm-hmm. they they were born in the eighties. I was, we were born in the nineties. Yeah. And she was like, 80s were better, 80s music better than 90s music. And I couldn't say yes or no to that because I, I know both. Yeah. I just look at it. I look at it more of like a pre 2000s and a post 2000s now. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like I could give you that. And at the same time, I could argue, I can argue against that because there's a lot of good mu- music in the 90s, but there's a lot of good music in the 80s. It can go back and forth. Right. But I was like, let's come together and let's both agree that pre 2000s. Kick 2000s ass, like post 2000s ass. I'm not saying it's music, oh, like just all over the place, just, like, just in culture and like actual media. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's just like yeah, everything, everything that came past the came pre 2000s, I think has a little higher quality than 2000s post. And give it a few more years, and I could be completely wrong, right? And it'll always fluctuate, but I'm start on that, and that that's my position, and it's got a lot of bias to it. But at the same time. There's like a lot of me that truly believes it. No, like actually, so here, here's why we're gonna break. Here, so here's why I say about that. I don't know when a lot of TV shows started, so I can't tell if they were pre two thousand to post two thousand. Well, I'm so saying like, like I'm not. I'm saying I'm not saying like oh it came out of there. I'm saying like the nineties babies. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and pre. Yeah. Oh, so what we yeah, yeah what we, we had, grew up with we, we had so much out. more like. We had so much more going for us mm-hmm. than, than 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 post two thousands. Do it. And we can get into that Pokemon. Like we'll go, we'll go straight into cartoons and start it off. Yeah. Now that we, yeah. So now that we got our anime recapping out of the way, right. I feel like that's gonna be a constant. That's always that's what she's up. That's something we just gotta do. Cause oh, oh dude, shit, anime. You and I have to. We and I go in. Right. But we, we, yeah, we now we're switching gears. Like, our cartoons alone, man. Dude, no, no. That's what I was saying. Uh, that's what I want to bring up. I saw this video that I reminded me. You remember Samurai Jack? Yo, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, Samurai Jack. One of the goats, you know, like amazing. I it, saw the scene. That, dude, it felt so indie. It, it, it did. was a very indie cartoon. Yeah, and it had such a fan base behind it. Yeah, because like, because the the concept of what it was, and that's why I love what they did when they finally came back to it. They're like, we're finally gonna end it. Like we're gonna do that final season where Jack did something. I felt gypped for two reasons, but but before I get into that, do you remember that episode where Samurai Jack saves a baby? No. So there's this episode where he finds this baby in the middle of the woods and like all these robots are trying to kidnap it or eat it or something like, like that. And Samurai Jack picks up that baby. And uh and he goes and at the end of it he finally brings the baby home and the mother's like, You were you saved my baby, thank you so much. And looks at it and goes, What'd you do to my baby? <laughs> and Samurai Jack's walking away and goes, Yo, yo, a child has seen many things in our journey together and has achieved Hokkaido. The spirit of the samurai. <laughs> and I was just thinking about it. I was all like, "That's just see, that's pure bold right there." Yeah. In in our cartoons, 
it was fine to traumatize a child and put it on TV. Because it still was badass the way he did it. He didn't do it. He didn't traumatize the child from being an asshole or like freaked out the baby. Baby was trying, was about to be murdered. Yeah. And he showed up and he was like, everybody wants to touch this baby, he's gonna die. Yeah. This is a fact. And the baby fucking came out of it, like, changed into a human being. But basically, overall, Samurai, our cartoons, just a little, our cartoons, if you were born in like early, ni- like early late 90s, right? And, like, and what's weird is you're 96 or 97? Seven. You're 97. We're all seven. We're all seven. What's weird is the people I know who were born like 98, 99, they don't know the same. I know. Like, I, that's what's like, weird. Oh, we, I feel like I was just thinking that. Like, we've made a cutoff, even in the 90s. But it's right? weird, though, because I feel like all, we were, the, all the 90s shows or animes or like even like the live TV stuff or like, um, like whatever was on um, has stood the test of time yeah. and I don't think like any shows in the 2000s will really stand the test of time right like Ben 10 Generator Rex well even the, well, even the shows like like early no, 2000s right no, no, no. that was that was cu- cu- like if you think of like Proud Family I feel like that would still stand the test of time they, or they like Kim Possible or something like Kim that. Possible but what I'm saying too is like those were shows that started in the 2000s but they were for the 90s people people born in the 2000s were too young to even fucking Really watch understand. shows when they first came yeah. out. Yeah, they didn't understand. Like, I also think like the '99 people. I think that's when Kids WV stopped being a thing. Yeah, yeah. So they missed a fuck ton. Like Kids yeah. WV, and there's like four Kids TV or something. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Until, they like, missed 2004, those. 2005, yeah. and then and then, but we were like five and six, so we understood like what yeah. quality television was. Dude, Tom and Jerry was a fucking bop. Tom was, and Mer- uh, yeah, it's just Did like, you Tom and Jerry show any of the like Looney Tunes? Come on man. Dude, you know? Looney Tunes straight up. I they didn't have any plot to it. It was just like it was just antics and you could watch it endlessly. Dude. Endlessly. No, here's here's a prime example, right? Early two thousands, so like so I'm gonna call this technically nineties type but nineties Jim Carrey? Oh, I sure. think Jim changed the, the mask. Game. The mask. I watched that just yesterday, or no, today. Is actually. Fresh Pit, uh, Prince nineties? Nineties. Well, yeah, it's it started in nineties. Yeah. Like, it, 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 whatever was set that set for the nineties. Even like Full House. Yeah, it was huge. Well, I mean, like SpongeBob. I think it was either ninety nine or two thousand and one. But like, even when we were talking about Pokemon, Pokemon's nineties. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is like, it's not the year that mattered. It was yeah, really like, catered to. Yeah. Right. Like Kids Next Door, I guarantee you, was post two thousand when it came out. Right. But it was catered to the nineties kids. Right. Right. When you were born in two thousand and you were four years old, you're not gonna watch Kids Next Door and be like, "Fuck yeah." yeah. Right. You're still trying to fucking figure your alphabets out. Right. You're not. You're not gonna look at that and go like, "You know what? Yeah, we should fight." The overall institution that tells us when right. it's not okay for us but to be like, children anymore. If you right. think about right. it, like those two years make a huge difference in terms of like technology, because oh, we yeah. started getting our phones in fifth grade, right? Oh, and yeah. those phones were like the ones where you fucking yeah, 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 where you still had to type out like go through four things to get to the one letter they you were wanted. Just and coming shit. out with like keyboards, like right? 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 attached, like not touch screen, but touch pads were the fucking crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember and then, like, the chocolate twos. Literally, it split up, and it was like four buttons on there were touch. It wasn't like, like a press button. Like the like, iPods were crazy. Yeah. It wasn't even the iPod, iPhones. iPod Touch was yeah. the thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, iPod, iPod iPhones was like maybe was when we were about to get into high school, like the start of eighth grade. So, like, that means the I think kids... high school was like where iPhones became a norm. Yeah, so, like, the kids who were two years younger than us... That means they were getting iPhones in like six years. So they're right. already like right. different. No, they're like, like indoctrinated like, into their middle school. And now yeah. it's like, now kids are born with iPhones. Yeah, right. Right. They come out the womb with an iPhone or an Android. Right. No, like straight up, straight up, look at my, like, okay, one, I have those roommates that are 21, right? That were born post 2000. I, 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 I had like, I hung out with a lot of those kids in, in college too. Right. And, and you, you, when I, it was only after I started hanging out with them, really talking with them, when I realized, oh shit. Like, I always take this. Like this level where I'm like, listen, I'm I'm older and I know more, but not not just because I'm born '97, you're born 2001. But just just like man. what what they showed, what we saw growing up compared to what they saw. Well, we so they too. they got phones and like social media, yeah, yeah and shit like that. We started off with none of that. I, we started where, where when it was okay. like when I, we're, we're, we're the in just, between. Yeah, like we we've seen both sides, right? So. I remember the Macintosh too, like the big ass computer with those fucking big ass backings. Mm-hmm. Too. Yeah, like PCs were huge. Remember we got and those over. At, um, PCs are now only huge for gaming, bro. I was That's gonna it. say, and it was like 
You to get on the internet, you had to dial up first. Yeah, and like we used to go to the li- slow motherfucker. Like we used to go to the library to use their computers because like laptops weren't really that. that right. no, like, yeah, like, you weren't you weren't just at home like oh yeah fuck don't let me just go ahead and do everything on like, the internet. Someone like someone had like everything yeah. was a discovery too. Like people weren't just like oh just Google it. People would be like go to funnygames.biz and you're like what you go and it's like a bunch of these PC like these like, yeah those, these those, those, those games. browser yeah, those yeah. mini clip games or whatever they're yeah, called yeah mini clip they'd be like very simple games and you just and they're lose. all stick figure shit bro yeah, yeah. yeah. it was very basic design they were, they were they were very fun they were still pictures in a moving background like <laughs> and, and, you know, and every it was always like a it always became like a team kind of thing but like internally because you'd be like what do you want funnygames.biz oh I got a dick thing game and you're like Okay, cool, cool. I'll have to check that one out. And you're like, no, I, I still lean towards funny games. I like their UI, but you didn't think about that shit like yeah. that. You were just like, I liked it because it had more color to it and like it was easier to sort through the games. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could find the games I wanted and some of them, they, not everyone had every single flash player right, right, right. Like, you had to know where to go, right? Like that's, that's why, that's why I take like landlines, like landlines, we had to deal with landlines. Yeah. I remember when you could pick up the phone well, and somebody in the other side of the house could just well, they would be well, like I, mean, back in the day too, I had to memorize. I had to have like it wasn't a lot of numbers, but I had to memorize important numbers. Like I needed to know my dad's, my mom's, the house phone, and like a few other relatives, my brothers. We're yeah. like uh, we and used to have day, a we used to have like a phone directory for like, <laughs> yeah, for our school because like people wouldn't have cell phones, right? So if right. you forgot your homework or you missed a day, like you call your friend, like yo, could you fax me the homework or some shit? Right. Like, you were like, can you send me? Or if you were like. If jump that, on AOL. If that was too much work for you, you would just fucking be responsible to do it. You know, there was no like texting someone like, let me just take a picture of my homework I sent to you. Yeah, yeah. That shit was never that accessible. You were like, okay, do I want to go through that faxing process or do I want to try and meet up with a friend or call someone and be like, homework? I really? really? Homework yeah. is what we're going to be talking over the phone on? I You're really wasting like... your minutes on talking about homework? No, like, that's Remember, no. minutes were a thing. Yeah. yeah dude. Uh, okay. No. But, I was a, uh, I was talking, I remember back when we were in middle school and I was trying to like get girls to be, to like me back in those days. I remember, I, it wasn't as simple as like, you know, send them a, like a, a DM or like a text yeah. where like, hey, you like Naruto? Check out this fucking thing like about Naruto and shit like that. Now I was at home, I was printing out full shell sheets of like Ninetales Fox so I could learn to draw or like put them in yeah. my binders. So I, I used to, fat ass, like I used, binders, trace, but, uh, I used to trace Goku a lot and my friends would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, did you draw that? That looks weird. I'm like, this, oh, they don't know this stuff. Yeah, right. yeah they Put, don't I'm know. putting it in the <laughs> way. Oh, yeah. like, it's, let's yeah. get this conversation out of the way real quick because we're trying to recap. Yeah, this. we're, we're heavy. We're, we're moving too back. Yeah. But I feel like 90s, like 90s babies kind of anime grew up with us. Yes. So like today's animes yeah. are like shorter series. That fits the attention. There's still some good ones like Demon books. Slayer and stuff, but a lot yeah. of the iconic Even ones then, are in the 90s. Dude, name, name me any series that has has that had a longer standing than One Piece, Naruto, Dragon Ball. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll argue for Soul here. That's not a long, but it didn't run that long. Oh, long I'm talking about oh, Jeff. Oh, yeah, like, no. Dude, these series started when we were like six and ended like, like in the last couple years. Yeah. One Piece started when I was two. That's true. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Like we got to grow up with that shit. Yeah. Today's like today's anime direction and like manga direction is cut to more of a direction of like shorter like get like, attention volume out. out. Like let's get volume out. Like, attention spans dropped up. Fuck. Fuck yeah, yeah dude. dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah, dude. No, like because like uh, with my uh, my roommate Johnny who's just getting into uh, the anime and stuff like that, like just that's, recently. And that's the weird part now. Like back in the day, if you were into anime, you were the yeah. outcast. Yeah, you were Now, if you're starting now, yeah, like, you're like, that where niche you group of anime people are like, you're starting hella late, bro. Right. Just because like, it's like a whole like category on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix, by the way. Oh my lord. You remember when Blockbuster was a deal? Yeah, oh, dude. I love well, down the street was Hollywood. Or fucking video. Netflix used to be the Redbox thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the trend, right? It was Blockbuster, and then once they started going under, because Netflix started to become a thing. Yeah. Right, Netflix had their their double package where you can rent movies from them, and then you can stream. So you had, like, both. And then they got rid of the renting thing and went straight to streaming, because that was just not... That was just not cutting. Like, but, like, even then, though, like, that was a mind-blowing concept. 
Because you weren't watching movies on the internet. You weren't like sitting in front of your computer and being like, oh, you get DVDs. Watch. Yeah, you have to get a DVD. You have to find out a DVD box in there. Like right? when we go. I was very lucky. Yeah, you have like literally like, like literally fucking drawers or cases of movies right. just organized. Or even like up. music CDs. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, I still have that downstairs, yeah. dude. I have like, I think that's full of movies. I have some movies in there, like just fucking movies. I have our, under our entertainment systems, we have literally just movies and then above that, just endless CDs and albums. Right. You still have to listen to the radio back then because Spotify, I mean, like, Apple always had their iTunes thing. Yeah, but that, yeah. they didn't have any streaming services. Yeah, yeah. You, you had to download buy. all your shit. Yeah. And people would, like... Says, and you had to be very selective on what you bought. Or, like, people would just go to, like, YouTube, like, use the, like, converter and just fucking put it on their phones. A lot of people don't recognize that we we were we were using the internet before YouTube was on the internet. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, we grew, I think that's, like, the biggest social media we grew up with was YouTube. Like, right. when YouTube came out, we were, like... Until, like or is when I like was like, this yeah. is real. And, and yeah. even then, like the videos on YouTube at the time were like not quality. The yeah. only person who really I want to say like really kicked off YouTube was Ryan Higa. Mm-hmm. Like that yeah. shit blew yeah. it up. Yeah. He, he's like he's like a pioneer. Dude, no, he did. I I still remember the first YouTube video that I small. ever watched. Yeah. Oh yeah, small. I remember it like it like so vividly. It was that it was right when that episode of Naruto dropped, where Naruto re- walked in on Hinata bathing in the lake, right? And um, then uh, somebody bad. took a song and cu- took that scene and put the song over it. And I remember watching it like vividly, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "You two have, has pictures of naked anime lady. I wanna, I wanna get off. What's this YouTube thing like?" And then it just. It, it didn't have ads, it didn't have nothing. It just yeah. got on and found it. Straight video. clip, yeah. Yep, straight clip. Like the iPod human. <laughs> yeah. Back when you could uh, say the R word without getting like flagged or anything like that, right? It was like, retard, yeah, or retard red. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? iPod human comes with a total of three memorized songs. People had a lot thicker skin back then. They did, they did. Because it was, because again, like. No, no, let's, let's. Yeah, let's let's give more. a little kudos to the 2000s because because like yeah we had the gateway of YouTube yeah. well, what the generation now and I have to give them props for this yes what they've done with it uh-huh. oh is, is is something it's, crazy I think the creativity that they've come out with is not only the creativity but like I think if you ask any like someone from four to like maybe twelve. They probably know YouTubers more than they know like actual celebrities. From oh movies. yeah, 100%. like they you could, they could probably name you a hundred YouTubers and probably couldn't name you like two people yeah. unless it was like a Marvel movie. Well, there's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. video game streamer or if it's yeah. just like a fucking what like a vlogger or whatever the case may be. Music. Right. Or... It's so crazy because now you see athletes trying to do all the like content stuff because they realize like, That's bro, no one knows. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they realize like no one knows about you except if you're on the field. So once you're off the field, no one. That's knows. the taboo too. Yeah. Like I know, like you have like the traditional mindset of like. Of like old, because you have again sports like that is hard because you have players that are like in their thirties and forties yeah. that have a very traditional mindset, and then you have these young bucks who are like trying to be young bucks, trying to like like a Juju Smith, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he does TikTok before games. People, I am he, I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah. But I have a traditional mindset to that, and I know a lot of people who are traditional basketball or I know he's a football player, but like basketball does it too. But like those kind of athletes. I know people like them for their talent, but at the same time, they're like, dude, cut the like, other stuff. Cut the shit. Voting, we're right? here for we're here for the sport. We're not here for anything else besides that. Right. Retire and then do that. You know, that's like where a lot of people come from with that. Or like, yeah. Like, but like, it gets people in trouble too. Yeah. So that's why they get upset with it because you're like you're putting out more than you need to. But, but here's my thing with like that. Like, it, it, what I have would really just give to like. The post two thousands children and stuff like that is like they really did figure like they were handed literally everything we ever dreamed of right off the womb. You know what I oh, mean? For sure. They were like they basically they came into this world at a point where they were like, by the way, you kinda need to know everything. Yeah. <laughs> and they the fucking thing, handled it. The thing like, though too was that like I feel and, and this is like kind of the drawback is it became so much of a thing that everybody it was almost like the dot com bubble. Yeah. Like everyone saw what it could be and they were like, let's everybody go for it. Mm-hmm. And out of that, like the elite people, like the people who made it, like Mr. Beast and like all the TikTok stars. I don't have a TikTok so I would. Yeah. But you know, like they, they pop off, like, oh, I have 500,000 views on TikTok. That's like a common thing now. Like that's not even like a, wow. You're just like, 
So does like everybody else with like their one right. one offs. Yeah, yeah, everybody who you're like a one, one right, right now. Right I right think uh, for us too, like a lot of our shows are what like had those like uh, abstract ideas of like VR or like doing like immersive stuff. Mm-hmm. But now it's like someone who's born today. It's like no, this is legit shit you can work on if you like really. Yeah, like, it, it, like, they, for us it was like not even a thought. Like coding, you would have to have like known somebody. Like, yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. everything is so mainstream now that you when gonna, they say like you have the ability to do anything you want, you really do now. Yeah. That's the problem though too that I found, and it's kind of a crux on our part, but also a blessing in my head because like everyone's becoming content creators now so like things are just getting regurgitated so many times like if i flip through my if i flip through my youtube shorts real quick yeah i'll get like a video that's saying the same thing in a different way like yeah. 20 times over yeah oversaturated you know? yeah. yeah it's hard so, to find the quality we had like a good origi- period quality and originality yeah. we had a good period of like four years where like everyone was killing it on the quality and the originality and then just kind of like well that but, they, but again that was because like when when content creation first became a thing right it wasn't, there wasn't things where people were all like, let watch me react to this one thing. Yeah. Like, that wasn't a thing. People uh, were all like, everybody heard about it. They read it in Yahoo News earlier this week. They don't need to hear me go over it. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to create my own thing. Like, I'm going to do this video. That's going to be entertaining. Or like and vlogging. Vlogging. Oh, dude, vlogging was like. That was peak YouTube. I that think. was peak. I re- you guys remember uh, Wong Fu Productions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I re- You remember. Uh, Wang Fu, it's a it's a Wang Fu weekend. Oh shit, dude! Um, Wang Fu weekends were their were their weekend vlogs, and they just just did vlogs. That oh, was also, well, he was like Ryan Higa did the off the pill. Yeah, right. Same thing. Where it was just like here's a little, it's like it's like I'm vlogging, but here's a little twist to it. Yeah. yeah. And here I'm gonna I'm gonna indulge you guys with just a little bit of my privacy. Right. But like, but no, like it was like uh, they would still be doing work. But either way. Like, no, I know, I know. Right, yeah, yeah. right, like when I would, I used to watch vlogs because when I would watch vlogs, it'd be like, wow, just like, that's cool. Lives. It was just them literally going to see their other content creator friends and playing frisbee yeah. or some bullshit like yeah. that. Like it, it would, would be more collaboration. So it would be kind of like when you watch those TV shows and there's like a crossover. You kind of think of that when you're watching those YouTube collabs. I right. feel like I feel like a good like point where like the 90s and the 2000s came together the best was not like fine the yeah, vine era vine yeah. era was that was when like you were like okay there's a lot of originality here and it's fitting to a lot of the area between anywhere from like the 80s to the like post 2000 right. people like it was like, like everyone had... would like eat a vine if you brought if you just throw the word out vine people would be like fuck yes yeah and everyone else who didn't they would just anyone post that would think pick up Right. It was the same thing with like MySpace against Facebook. Like when you go, oh, what's the first social media you like that you were incorporated to? And like I didn't have a MySpace, but I was born around that era where MySpace was at one point the linchpin of social media to have. <laughs> yeah. Facebook boomed off, and then you know that became a thing. Same thing with Vine. Yeah. You know, Vine had its fucking peak performance, and then it went from oh they like. Some some bullshit happened. They got rid of the app, and then TikTok was just like, "We're gonna take we're, it. Yeah, we're gonna fill in that of what you guys did not." I mean, it's not just TikTok. It's just the concept of stories in general, or even Snapchat. It's all from Vine, like those ten second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, yeah those ten seconds. But here's my thing too, though. Like, what, what made Vine beautiful again wasn't the fact that like all was this perfect, like a uh, little Edit, like yeah. app. Like, no, it was the fact that just every single video. What made that video famous was genuinely how good the content was. Right. It was, right? It was like, is this hilarious? Is this actually funny? Let's send it. Well, that's Let's the thing too. You got a wide variety of people who are meticulously like, how can I make, how can I get your attention in six seconds? Right. Or the people who had like those like hot takes where they're like, oh, epiphany moment. I have to fucking just, yo, you guys ever have a moment when, and everyone can relate to it. Yeah. You know, and everything in between. Yeah. Now, now TikTok and like, and this is why I hate like the idea of TikTok because like everyone just piggybacks off the the pioneers of TikTok. Right. Like, oh, let's do a dance, and like everyone plays the same song, same backdrop of a song, do a dance. and it's the same fucking dance. Yeah. Like be original and do something else, and like you know show something else. Like I've seen this, I've like, seen this my, dance twenty times over now with twenty different people, and it's not impressive anymore. No, like my whole for you page on TikTok is either thirst traps, right? Yeah. Cosplay thirst traps, okay. Uh, anime thirst traps, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then every now and then, a mental health video. <laughs> <laughs>
like, like that's, 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 but when I was online, remember that guy who like would take his face into like, and fish, like, you remember that Indian dude? Who, or yeah. dude, what about the Water Malone guy? Oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. the big thing I've seen in my life. It's a Water Malone. Yeah. It is something like that. That was, people still do that shit. People still say Water Malone. Yeah. yeah. Like, but what was the one with the bands? The white bands. That was like a high school thing. Oh. What was, it, what was the guy's name? The guy, from, yeah, he's from Target, right? Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Daniel. 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 <laughs> Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> Killing with the white bands. Yeah. Damn. I think one thing that uh, like the post two thousands I want to give credit for is like all these food like things that have like blown up. Like oh, ramen yeah. is popular, pho is popular, or like boba. Or, like yeah, but just, I mean, like, I think that's a more regional thing. Like we we are very blessed to have that. Like to have that. But I'm saying like because of like social media and then like people just being more like um, accepting of other cultures. I guess over time, it's kind of like helped. Well, I was just See, in Arizona has, for three years, and it was like, again, like I said, this is more regional to us. Uh, yeah. Because in Arizona, we didn't have a huge Asian like, yeah, yeah. cuisine that was like, that was as as good as we have it here, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. same in Hawaii, like, you're not going to get good fish in more, like, like Hawaiian-style fish. Yeah, anywhere else. Here or even anywhere else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, okay, but then, see, that that's where, like, I was watching this comedian the other day, and I thought it was hilarious, because... Oh, actually, two two comedians. Do you remember that? I can't remember the name, but she's this, this white lady, and she came out with the elder millennial uh, comedy thing. Basically, where this so she she comes out with this joke where she's like, "Listen, I was born this time, so I'm technically not a millennial, but I'm too. I was born too late to be considered. What was the generation Gen before Z us? Oh, before us, it was Gen Z and then millennial. No, it went millennials then Gen Z. Yeah. So we're millennials. No, we're, we're like it. right on the bubble. Yeah. yeah if right you're 96, bubble, if you're 96, you're a millennial. If you're seven, you're a Gen Z. I would say, and I say bullshit on that. I think it's mindset set. I think it's mindset based. I, I don't know why they just didn't start it at the 2000. That right. would have made way well, more sense. At this point, for me too, I don't care. Yeah. You can call me a Z or a millennial, and I just. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of like do well, it. Yeah, we've always, work. like, 97 has always been like the half the on one and half on the other, anyways. Right. Yeah. That's why they're the most impartial, though, because, like, they're like, I could see it from, like, the younger kids' perspective. Because when we grew up, we did have technology. It wasn't the best, but we yeah. did get that, like, yeah. we did, it was, it was not a gold spoon, it was not even a silver spoon. I would say it's probably bronze. It wasn't yeah. plastic, I mean, but it we, was bronze. We, yeah. would grow, we were growing <laughs> up as the technology was growing. It was like, we were growing in part with te technology. Yeah. Now you're like, you're growing up, but the technology is already like. We were like literally part of that test subject era. Yeah. yeah. We were really like, really let's really see like. what happens when we give them too much technology. Yeah. They're like, okay, that's a little bad. But <laughs> and then, like, the generations more. after us were just like, oh, we'll take it then. Right. <laughs> they, were, they were literally like, we gave you, we gave you too much. And then the generation after was like, no, 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 you think it was too much. We, we can't, they just weren't able to handle it. <laughs> yeah, that was the same thing. Like, again, well, yeah. that's how it went for us. Yeah. It was like, let's see if technology is the answer. And they would like, they would like slowly give us technology and they're like, okay, that's a good pace. Let's ramp it up a little bit. Okay, if that's too much, okay, let's dial it back. I think they're at the age where we can give them iPads now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we were that test subject group. Like, literally, we were the first class yeah. coming into high school that had iPads. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have them freshman year, did we? We had them sophomore, sophomore. year. Yeah. But again, we got to see that transition. Yeah, yeah. Like, right? we got to see oh, a year yeah. with and without. Yeah. yeah. Right. We were literally that control group. We are like, okay, you know, it's their first year, so let's see how they do with iPads. Yeah. And then next year, now they have a better, now they have a good idea of like, okay, we dealt with four years of no iPads. Now here's the first group that gets them in sophomore year. Yeah. We can compare them to the freshman year who, who now has iPads from high school all the way throughout. Yeah. Right. So well, we yeah, had that. We were to see it from right. both sides of the fucking. Spectrum. But I think for like uh, people in our generation or in the '90s, it's easier for us to detach from social media than someone who's just grown up with it. Like it's so hard for them to be like, "I'm just gonna go on social media." Right. Like, they I mean, for uh, I mean, you and I do it all the fucking yeah. time. Right. I, I, he's not really on either. He just looks at memes. I just I'm genuine. Not even memes. I know, I'm genuinely just looking at those traps. And yeah. <laughs> then I just I close TikTok and that. I don't even I don't use Instagram anymore. Yeah. Facebook is. A barren wasteland to me. I mean, it's like, I, so I did the same thing where I took myself off. I'm actually starting to now deactivate them. Oh, yeah. You know, because I left them on there and I was like, maybe I'll get back to them. 
Now, at this point, I'm just going to deactivate it. If I want to start it back up, I'll just do a fresh one. Yeah. Like, I don't use Facebook at all, but I have to have Facebook for work because you do, like, advertising on Facebook. Yeah. So, like, but outside of that, like, Instagram, just messaging people, and that's it. Like, if people would just go back to texting, I wouldn't be on social media. Right. Yeah, that's the funny part. I talk. So, like, I work at the bars, and a lot of the kids I get are going to be are college-esque or, like, around my age little on the younger side. Yeah. Right, like 21 to like 27 is probably a good range of like the, the majority of the night crowd there. Yeah. yeah. And all the kids I know who are younger than me are the ones who like, when I was single at the time, they wouldn't ask for my phone number. They'd ask for your They'd snap. They'd ask for my Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 I, saw, I saw a meme where it's like, if she asked you for your snap, is she too young for you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, legit, they were like, do you, have an, like what, do you have an IG? And I was like, no. Or what's your snap? I'm like, I don't have either one. Yeah. What? It was a mind fuck for them. They were like, I guess uh, I guess we got phone numbers, we can use those, right? No, that, that blew right? my mind. Like, it's like, that's the last resort. And that's my first option. That's because that, and honestly, that's what's murdering me and like making friends in college right now because a lot of them are younger and they like, they'll go to me and they'll be like, what's your, what's your Instagram? And then they'll message me on Instagram. I don't check my Instagram. Yeah. They'll be like, I sent you a message like, like last week, you didn't reply to it. I was like, oh, bro, I'm not on Instagram. Like you have uh, an app, but you're not yeah. active. I genuinely open it just so I can see what my what the, my younger friends are like doing and then just go, oh, okay, nobody's messaged me. I could just close it. I don't fucking, I was like, when they asked me for that, I was like, why don't you just ask me for my number? Like, what's, just send me a text. Like, that's, it's not hard. Yeah. But like, nah, it's, that, it's just how they, they communicate now. It's like a it's less, it's a lower stakes. It's like leaving things open ended though, right? Yeah. Because like for, because again, when I was at ASU, my, my our biggest group chat was a Snapchat group chat because you know content would get deleted after twenty four hours, so it wouldn't be like this. Like okay, wait, I gotta find this. Right, like you didn't in the it. message. Yeah, it didn't matter. It was just like a, you know what I mean? It was a, it was open ended in the sense that you like you were never gonna reach out to people. Yeah, but you'd just be like, my story is I'm at the gym, and people would be like. Hey, you're going to the gym? And you're like, yeah, I just got there. Okay, I'm going to swing by real quick. Right. All right, cool. Let's get a workout in. Like, that was a great ideal time for me to use Snapchat. Right. I, once I left that group and I left ASU, I was like, I have no need for this. Because I was never interested in what they were doing anymore. Because right. I was just like, I'm on my own stuff. I got to do my own thing. Like, I got to figure it out. This has no use for me. It's just taking up space on my phone. Yeah. And then, like, if anything, I just like, I'll get that FOMO where I'll like, touch the app and I'll scroll and I'll see what they're doing. And I'll just be like, I actually don't want to be a part of any of this. Like, I'm just wasting time at this point. Like, I'm wasting minutes just going, like, checking. Like, I just felt like I had to, like, get it out of my system kind of thing. Like, Do you know, I don't, oh, this I don't they're up post to. on Snapchat anymore because it would literally go. It, it was the weirdest thing to me. I would post a, something on my story on Snapchat, right? And people would be like, that's hilarious, bro. How you been? I'm like, you have my fucking number. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you waiting until you see I'm alive to check on me? Yeah. Like, what? I like, yeah, I don't have Snap on my phone anymore. And I don't even like watching people's stories on Instagram. Because half the time I'm like, this shit's just boring, bro. Like, yeah. it's well, so it's not boring. even, it's, not, it's nothing that pertains to you. Yeah. Right? Like, it's more yeah. something that it would be like, a close friend would be like, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Like, yesterday I had another tricky thing and I had to leave early. So I was looking at people's stories just to see what I missed, like the battle. Exactly, battle. exactly. But I'm not going to look at people's stories when there's nothing going, like, yeah. there's nothing I'm interested it's like, in. Like, oh, dude, yeah. he, went to, he went to fucking Five Guys. Joe, like, I don't care, like, to yeah, be honest but, with you. Right. But, like, but, like, that's just how, that's what the newer generations kind of, like, took in and they're, they're just, like, they, um, they understand it like on a different level than we do, right? Like we they see do, but it at the for same like, time, like how much more, how much more anxiety and like how much more mental health do they have to deal with? I think the, fo- the FOMO is a crazy thing, but I think, it really is. But I think it the really pandemic kind of like, you said FOMO? FOMO, like you're, you're missing out. out. Oh. But I think the pandemic kind of cut a lot of it because everyone was like baseline not doing shit. I was going to say, I think the pandemic reset it for everybody because I have people like 10 years older than me who are fucking feeling that FOMO. They're like, yeah. I need to go to a bar. And they have like adult lives they're living. They're like, I need to go get like, just have like a night. I just need a loose night. Like just I think- One drunk loose night. And I'm like, okay, like it's understandable because yeah. like my mindset was in the same direction during COVID. Yeah. You know, I was just like getting like fucking like ready to rip walls down. Cause I was like, I'm getting fucking pent up. I'm like, wow. Even as it, even as like the introvert part of me was just like, this is too much. Right. Like this is overstimulation of introversion. I, I find that really interesting because because COVID had the opposite effect on me. Because initially, when when we when we were in college and COVID hadn't happened yet, I was like, man, I don't, I don't hang out with anybody enough. I want to know what's going on. Though. I want to see. I haven't seen Austin in like days, right? 
Like, I was like, I want to know what's everybody's up to. All those books. And then COVID hit, and I went, nah, I think I'm going to chill. <laughs> but I think it, that happened to a lot of people where now it's like before you'd have fear of missing out. Now you're like, nah, I'm cool with just my alone time. Right. Like, I'm cool with missing out. Just, I want, because you had to look inward for a lot of people, yeah. right? You had to look inward, and then you kind of went, I just want my life to be I think, I think, and I don't mean this on any respect to anybody, but there was a lot of substance that people within themselves were missing. Yeah. About or, like their self discovery. There was like a lot of substance that they kept putting aside or they were like it was like an insecurity of like like for me, I was like at one point very insecure about telling people I was into anime and that. And then at one point I was like, Wow, if it's not anime, I have like not much to talk about because I've I use a lot of anime concepts to help me get over, like to get right, it's how to get big it. concepts through. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, let's talk about like space and time. Right. Hey, have you seen this anime? Like, they do a great job of portraying this idea of it. Right. Like, what are your thoughts on that? That's how I get thoughts across. Right. That's how you communicate. That's fair. And by doing that, you know, I like kind of was just like, I gotta stop getting over this fear of like. Of, of being like a, a not a weed, but like in that world of like I I have a very big anime like affinity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like that that's a part of me, and I don't know why I'm putting that aside because now like I'm running out of topics to talk about without incorporating this one. Right. Yeah. yeah. I really. think uh, like during the pandemic, like people found like really assess like what is their true self and if they've been doing that, and also like people just do shit just to say they have stories. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the pandemic was just like all right. I've been wasting all this time doing shit that I didn't care about. Right. And now that, like, time or, like, the people around you are way more important because you don't know, like, of the uncertainty, you're like, let me just start doing shit that I actually care about doing. No, yeah. 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 Okay. It, it, was, it was a big reset button for a lot of people. Right. It was in huge. In the biggest way. Like, in that way, in that way, COVID really just changed me for, like, a, in, like, a loop. Because I was just, like, before COVID, I was that crazy guy, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, yeah, I go out and I do crazy shit so people tell stories about me at their parties. They're like, what? Now I'm just Yeah, like, you want to be the hype. Right, I wanted to be the hype, but now I'm like, no, I just want to make sure my friends... <laughs> my friends don't care about it. You want to have a good time and make sure everyone's all right. Yeah, you know? that's all Everyone right. else is having a, like a good enough time, too, and not feel like they have to go overboard or underboard. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure everybody's having fun in that way with... Well, the day is done, we remember this was a good day. And then we, we go back to our regular lives. Because that's yeah. really all we have. It's the good days and our regular lives. <laughs> you know, the high theme movement, you know, like, E-Foy, like, the yeah. gas. Literally, it was like that 2020 point was like a gas break dip kind of thing. Because, like, 2020 hit. And I think everyone was like, I think everyone before that, that COVID era was like, just fucking run. Like, they were all sprinting into walls just trying to break them down yeah not realizing that we can just go around or like we could look at this from a different angle and work together to climb it or you don't understand how how fucking on point that is for me right i right. think like for, like that's how i look at it now because initially before covid i was just like fucking take grass take grass fucking transfer transfer graduate graduate job like, I'm like no that was me right. it's because thing. like, like social like, media and like the um like how much time we spend on watching videos like attention span, it sped everything up. And I think it was too much yeah. too fast. I, I, I agree. I agree with that 100%. It just felt like, like we were like at a nice brisk walk and then it became a jog. And then at one point we just found ourselves sprinting yeah. and sprinting and sprinting. And we were, and we stopped, we stopped taking a look around and we were just like, keep going, just go, 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 go. Right. Everyone else is going fast. We gotta go faster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like someone in high school already got a job at fucking like, yeah. Cisco or like Apple or some shit like that. I'm still in college. What am I doing? Like, yeah. Just, just, just going as fast as you could. And, and then going, yeah, no one took a, a second to be like, how is my overall health and how is everything going? They were just like, just keep going, keep going. Who cares? We'll figure that out afterwards. Right. We'll deal with it later. Once we reach the promised land, we'll do a self-assessment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then COVID hit and they're everywhere. All right, so promised land definitely not happening for at least another two years. Well, that was the thing. That was the wall that everyone tried to run through and it just was like, no, this one's not good. Yeah, it was like, it we was don't the, care how much money you have, how popular you are, everyone's on the same fun boat. It right. was the unstoppable force, or the think, the thought of being an unstoppable force, meeting a legitimate, like, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you thought you were an unstoppable force in reality. Until you ran into a yeah. genuine, <laughs> immovable object, right. and then you were just like, okay, let's take a step back, maybe we could go around it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, fuck, oh. Uh, <laughs> Like, so, like, wait a second, do we all have the same one? <laughs> right, yeah. right. And 
Oh. Well, then everyone was just like, maybe my job isn't as fun as I thought. You know, maybe I wasn't, maybe the people I'm hanging out with weren't the people I was supposed to hang out with. Yeah. Like for me, I legit was like, like for me, I was sprinting through college, but I was like sprinting to figure it out. Right. And I was like fucking losing my mind trying to. Right. And I started freaking out. And once COVID started hitting, that's what, right before COVID hit, I was going to join the Navy. And I was like, that's one thing I could sprint to. Once that hit, I was like, I'm kind of locked in here. I'm dialed in a little bit, but at the same time, I have a little wee- leeway, but I'm, I'm dialed in here and I feel comfortable with this. No, like, like, yeah. Yeah, like well, it's, it was, uh, Cassie, Cassie stopped going to college and got her job over COVID. Yeah. And that was because basically COVID hit and she was like this. I can't do online. Yeah, she was, she was like, I'm not, it wasn't that she wasn't going to do online. It was mainly, it was just like the world, the world is going, the world stopped for two seconds and she was like, I think, do I have another option besides this bullshit? I was gonna say, <laughs> literally, there's a stop and everyone just went. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. I think COVID hit and everyone just took like a. Everyone was able to finally take a deep breath and go, let me look real quick. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like taking a zoom, like taking the zoom button with like an infinite amount of zoom and they just kept touching it. It's just like, keep zooming in. Let's just keep zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. And then once they couldn't zoom in anymore, they're like, I forgot what the image of that. Let's pull it back right. a little bit. You're like, let's pull it back all the way real quick. Let's like, see what, what's going on under this. That's all funny. Because, like, genuinely, in COVID hit, everybody went, I've been, kept, I kept my head down for so long, just yeah. sprinting. And then COVID hit, and they were like, oh, this is where I'm at in life right now? Oh, no, this you, ain't it. The 50 hit me post high school. I was literally driving cars to like around, dude, to trying to fucking like keep up with the lifestyle of like go 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 go. Right. And I literally hit fucking walls, and I was just like, maybe I need to take a step back. <laughs> no, like a hundred percent. I was like, but like, I never had the time to, right? No. Like, you take a step back, and you're like, nope, I'm falling behind already. I need to come back right into it. No, no, like a hundred percent. Because like you, because when you, because before COVID, it basically if you try to take a breather and really try to figure out your own like one mental health, two emotional health, and three like just all around like well being in terms of like life, people are like, what are you doing? Okay. Remember, remember when this taking taking a year to discover yourself was like looked down upon. Oh, like right after high school. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And they would, and people would be like, yeah, yeah these were like, yeah. yeah, they were like, they were like cardinal sins. Like, well, even in our, and even our predicaments of being in private school, it was almost taboo to go to like community college. Yeah. yeah. They were like, okay, like, they were like that's an option. How dare you take any time and I feel like, I would say, I feel like you would know this better than me because like I committed to a four year and then I backed out last second. Yeah. But like for you, I think you were set on going to, to community, right? Yeah, because I, I got into like San Jose State and then I talked to my dad about it and we we're like, yeah, I'm not going to go because we saw other people like take forever at San Jose State and my dad's like, not worth spending hella money like now, to be there. Well, we had counselors in high school. Yeah, but my counselors were all like, uh, I had like one counselor and she was just like, no, I think you should still go yes. or like, uh, yeah, don't go to community college See? and stuff. The only person I had that was like cool about it was uh, we had this father who would teach one of the classes. I think it was Father Kim. But, oh, yeah, he's awesome. when, he, he just did a checkup like senior year. He was like, oh, so where are you going to school? Like for everyone. And like he'd do a one-on-one outside. And I was like, oh, I'm going to community college. And then my plan is to transfer. And he's like, oh, that's, that sounds cool. I Like I think it's a good idea. And then like if this is something you want to do. Like he was like super supportive. Yeah. But outside of that, everyone else. Yeah, like, yeah, even yeah, family though. It wasn't just school. Like no, other yeah, family yeah. would be like, the fuck? You're going to De Anza? Right. Like yeah. these are like, how dare you even think? about not just immediately sprinting towards your next goal. Well, it was, yeah. a, it was even, I feel like not a bigger problem, but I felt like I had more of a looming shadow to, to go through because my brother got into San Diego State. So I was like, oh shit, now I have to, <laughs> I have to keep up. I have to keep that legacy going. Right. Um, my only reason why I was, was able to make De Anza like a viable option to everybody in my circle was because I was like, oh, it's for soft. Yeah. Actually, you know, actually, like, oh, yeah. I can actually go, like, oh, I can play collegiate sport. Right. So, like, it's not like I'm just, like, becoming a fucking bum and I'm, like, fear, like, the fear of, like, yeah. running away. So, I'm yeah, like, let's just right. do soccer see if I can, how far I can fucking run that into the ground. Dude, no, like, I, so I'm the complete opposite of both of you guys, right? Because, like, my grades were never good enough to get me into a four year, mm. or at least not a four year I wanted to go to. So, so basically, it was like when I went to community college, when I got there, they were all, like, Kendall. Listen, I can't even take the ground. They were like looking, they were talking to me like I, like, 
they were feeling bad for me. They were like, I hate it. Grades weren't good enough to get to college. You wanted to go to college. It's fine. You bounce back. You bounce back. And then I, I went, and that's why Neanderthal was ruined for me. Yeah. Because while I was at Neanza, I just, I was, I had horrible mental health, right? I was just all around, like, at one point, I'll be real right at one point I was suicidal over it because I was just like, oh, dude, I had mental health issues. Dude, no, yeah. Like, Throughout the ass during that, like, era. Yeah, because you're sitting, because for me, right, I'm sitting, I don't know about for you, but like, I say for me, because when I got there, it felt like I was I was letting people down by by having to be here for so long. Yeah. Right. I was like everybody else is just leaving and getting shit done, and I'm still here trying to figure out like why how to yeah, how well, to was, student and everything. And then I transferred and told me things. I was like, oh wait, no, nah, fuck everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> like I I just want to I have a plan now. I have a plan now. You know what I mean? Like I mean I took that mindset where I was just like because I had the same thing where. I don't know if people had expectations for me, but it very much felt that way. Yeah. And I was like, I felt like I, I was like, I have to live up to these expectations for whatever reason, right? You're right. And the moments I didn't, I was like, how do I even look these people in the eyes? You know? And I'm like, fuck, man, dude. It's a, and same thing. Like I got, I got to a point where I'm like, I don't really want, like, it's not fuck these people, but I'm like, whether they have expectations on me or not, I could care less at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I couldn't care less anymore. But uh, like, if, if worst case scenario, if they fucking set me off right now, whether I made it or not, it's none of their business anymore. Yeah. You know, like if I don't make it, that's on me at this point. I could care less. I couldn't care less what they think anymore. Right. Yeah. You know? That's like, and that's kind of, that's what happened with me once I tra- like finally I transferred, and even then it was like okay, two years I'm out, and then COVID hit right when I was about to, right when I actually did transfer, I got accepted to my four year, and I was like okay. I can transfer now. I'm actually might gonna transfer again because now they're not letting people take classes online. So I just wanna go somewhere I don't have to drive all the way up there. Yeah. The same dorms. But I digress. I got there, I was still in the mindset of sprinting, and then COVID hit and it was like everything's online, stay home, take the classes. And I did. And I was still like, oh I need to get a job, I need to work, I need to do things, I need to get things done. And now I'm just like, oh, okay. I need I need to I think it's just, just, now I'm just genuinely trying to figure out if my career path, I'm going to finish my career path, but now I'm not, now I'm not out here like, oh, okay, I need to finish it as fast as possible so I can get a job. Now I'm like, no, I'm going to finish my career path because I'm already almost done, but I'm not just going to jump out of this into the, jump out of the fire pan into the fire, you know what well, I mean? Well, and that's where I fucking found myself at too. But I think I think COVID is a good way to put it. It just became a natural disaster. Yep. A lot of natural disasters, like tsunamis and earthquakes, they have like like earthquakes have aftershocks. So you yeah. get the big fucking like the San Andreas fault. You had that big fucking fault, mm-hmm. and then you still had smaller seismic earthquakes happening afterwards. Like that, like I said, aftershocks. Same with tsunamis. You get a big ass fucking wave, right. and it's not like oh, it's over now. Right. You have more waves still coming, and it like slowly slowly digresses. Yeah. Same thing with COVID. It was just like a big fucking global just fucking natural disaster yeah and we and wipes the board and we were like okay i think we're good and then it was like nope here's the here's the aftershock and here's the fucking second wave and yeah. i think now we're getting to like less turbulent waters and i mean you uh, we, just, this yeah. podcast has been on that journey with us and if you remember us at the very beginning shit dude dude yeah those were some fucking heavy waters to swim through yeah i know we dude even yes. now, though, even now, I still find myself like on a roller coaster that's going up and down, but it's getting much more manageable. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm starting to see like the direction. Like, I'm getting used to the fucking waves of it. Yeah. And I'm starting to control it the way I want it. So I'm starting to find a rhythm in the whole thing. Yeah. Right? It's very it's like, nice. so, like, now it's not a matter of like, okay, I got to get all this stuff done so that way I can get all the other things done. Now it's just like, listen. It's like, I, I show up here, I'm like, I show up here because you guys are here, I told you I'll be on here. Right? I'm not here. I'm not like, oh, let me make sure I'm on time and let me make sure I do this. And do I have all this content? Like, that's where we started. Yeah, right? I we were like, this. notebook, notes, ideas, this, this, this. Now we're just like, nah, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just go with the flow with this. And it's been, it. our best, it's been our best content. I feel like, far, yeah. I feel like as we keep coming out with more content, it just gets more smooth and more smooth. Right. And don't get me wrong, we'll have some days where we're just like both out of it. The, yeah. the content's not the greatest, but like, even that is like a lot more is a lot better than our first season content. Oh, uh-huh. oh yeah. We were like, okay, these are our talking points and like we were really trying like again, it's funny how things start to grow up with us because like the podcast itself, 
at the beginning of it, we were like trying to find what was going to be our niche, how we dial it in, like what direction we want to go with it. Yeah. And now we found that direction without having to be like, okay, here's like here's the notebook of ideas. Which one do we want to go through today? We did relationships last week. We can do now. It's just like, what do we feel like rambling about? Yeah, you know what can we stay mostly on topic about? Like, you see anything interesting this week? I did. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, anybody ask some like thought provoking questions for you, or like, right? Like, and that's the, again, like that now. Just because we finally are now at this point where we're just like, it's not about becoming the most successful you can be at as fast as possible. It's about it's, it's management. It's, yeah. yeah, it's about managing and just enjoying it. Yeah, like. Cause like how many people, how many people figured out just over the last two years how miserable they really are yeah. in their life? A lot of people do. So many people a lot figured of people. out. They were like, I can't believe I'm and, still here. And that's the thing. I think it's like a whole, like at least in our area for the most part, again, I talked to so many people and I noticed a lot of things being in the industry I work in. Yeah. And it becomes a thing of like, and you remind, you remind me of Whoopi Goldberg on, uh, on Star Trek Connection. Do you remember her, her character? No, uh, remind me. Her character was, so she's a, she's an Arulian. Mm-hmm. Her species genuinely are people that just, they're listeners. Oh, so okay. They yeah, travel yeah. the galaxy and they work in bars and they just, they just listen. Yeah. And they're like great advice givers. And yeah, like they're, they're pretty much the therapists. Yeah, you're just, yeah. it's genuinely, you're there you're like, listen, over my, over all, with all the things I've seen and now know. But anyway, continue. You're saying. But, you know, that reality of like, like again, I've seen so many people's realities, and when at a bar, people speak truths yeah. for the most part. I don't think people get drunk and they just try to talk. They try to lie. They try to them. tell you the truths of their life. They yeah. don't get drunk and just start telling a bunch of lies. Right. You know, it's easy, obvious tells. Right. And I mean, a lot of people were in that spot. I think a lot of people were in, are on that same roller coaster. Is what I found out. Where they're like. Man, what I was doing, I enjoyed it. But was it because I enjoyed it or is it because like it got incorporated into my lifestyle? Right. And then because of things figuring it out, you know, like did I genuinely enjoy playing soccer? Uh yeah, because I still do it, right? Right. Did I genuinely enjoy like working in that office? Fuck no. Right? And that's why I left. Right. You know, I started making decisions and I was like, okay. And I, and that became that became the crux of things. People started getting rid of the the excess that they felt they needed to have. But really did it, right? Yeah. For whatever expectation. Oh, I have to work this job or I have to do more because I feel obligated to. Right. And Obligations I mean, got out the window. To do this. You know? I still want to make money. Oh, for sure. Right. Nobody right. nobody does it. Right. But like it's like what's what's the value of it, right? Is this worth it's not even time too. It's like because everybody's gonna work usually about the same right, amount. Right. It's a matter of time regardless. Does know. this does this action, job career, vocation, hobby. Is this something I genuinely enjoyed doing for me was the end, end point. Yeah, I saw, I saw a lot of people start stop going to the gym because they're like, I was just little working out to, for the aesthetic of it. It wasn't yeah. even for my own sake. It was just so I could feel a little more confident yeah. when people looked at me. Right. You know, it wasn't even like, I just liked feeling healthy. It was like, I just wanted, when people looked at me in a room, not to think, what a, what a lard ass. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And, once COVID hit, people had had stopped going through that conversation and stopped going through that like mindset because they were like, no, I mean, who's, who's really judging me besides me and my own household when I have to stay away from everybody? Exactly. And that's why I started going to the gym. Because I was just like, initially I wasn't going to the gym because I was like, listen, this is who I was. I'm dad bought me. I'm dead. Now I'm going to the gym. Not because, a little bit because I want people to look at me and be like, hey, nice. But also now because I'm just like, my every, where I was, where I was hoping to be when I was when I was young, when I was thinking where I was gonna be when I'm 25, is not what I am right now. And I didn't think about being 25 when I was young, man. Dude, you know, when I was like 16, I about it. my well, my whole thing was like, you know, Wolverine. I think like canonly, Wolverine age is stuck at 25. Oh yeah, like, yeah. So it's my, one of those things where it's like biologically or like yeah, yeah biologically, biologically he's like 25. But but yeah. Right. Well, like rea- reality wise, he's been on this planet for like hundreds of years. Right. So, but, but when I found out that Wolverine was 25, biologically speaking, I was like, so that means I'm going to reach my peak at 25. So I'm going to be Hugh Jackman, six pack, bulk of shit, 25. And now I'm not. But yeah. Hey, like people, because I know a lot of people have like that number in their head where they're like, I've gone past my prime. 
Or like, this is this is the moment I can hit my primes. I've known 30 year olds who fucking who can outwork any any 20, 18 something year old all day long. I mean, yeah. you see it in sports now, people are playing way longer too. Fuck yeah, yeah. dude. And I'm not a huge fan of this guy, but LeBron James, like his age and what he's doing still at his age he's against crazy. literally 18 year olds who are fucking doing back foot. I know they're not really doing that, but like, <laughs> almost in your head, you're like, this fool, give him a little like spring trampoline, and this will do like a triple backflip. Yeah. Or like they could just play all day without feeling anything. Yeah, right. But like, so he's like yeah. 20 million times more than everybody else and fucking go back into the gym and do like a thousand shots. Right. And, and they're ready to play a second game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's it. See, like that's why I was like, I won't go to the gym. But now I'm just only going to the gym because I just, I'm concerned about my health. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I've been going to the gym I took out that aesthetic portion of it where I was like, I need to get, I need to get bigger, I need to get stronger, I need to look better. It became less of that, it became like, I just want to feel healthier. And like, now that I have goals in mind that like, a little associated with fitness, it's like, now those are directed in that. Which is all coming back to me though, right? It's not like I'm doing these goals because oh, I want these people to see me in this life. Like, right. Fuck no. Nah. I'm doing this goal because I want to do it. Right. Right. That's the end all be all. That's what I'm saying to myself. It's not, it's not because I told Johnny over here that I was going to get it done. Right. It's because I just want to get it done. Right. And whether I make it or not, the journey is what I... Oh, this is what I was going to get to because like you kind of reminded me of this Futurama episode. It was like toward the like end of the end of their series. But the the uh, what was his name? The dude with the bag. The actor with the fucking paper bag. Oh yeah 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 the, the guy the ego guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about. The process. It truly really is, though. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it is. As clean as as like annoying as they made it sound, right. it's, that's very much the case. Right. Because like I could end up being like a millionaire, billionaire, whatever the case may be, but if I don't if I don't experience that whole pathway to it, like I'm not gonna learn a damn thing, and I'm not gonna be like it's not gonna be a well earned no, position. A hundred percent. Because like you get these people that like that fall for the same trap every time, where it's all like learn to be a millionaire in three years or less. From a YouTube video you found of another millionaire who's pitching you being a millionaire. Yeah. Right? And I felt for, I, I look at those that I, I used to go, wow, well, it's just that simple, huh? Right. And then you really look at it and go, no, no, it's no, not. No, There's no. a process to this. It's a process that it, it's a process of, of standing up and falling and standing back up yeah. and falling. And then when you finally, finally realize where you went wrong, you, you make it. Yeah. But like, it's then you can finally take one step forward. Right. Exactly. It's like a lot of people are just gonna they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna walk straight to that wall and they're gonna be like, okay. Uh <laughs> they go, uh oh okay, no, no, I get it, I get it. Chip at the wall. <laughs> yeah. Now let me try it. <laughs> like, like, it's still the same thing. So it's just kind of this it's that's life at and, this point. And I mean if we could bring this full circle on that note, as we talked about anime earlier. That's literally like the whole premise of, of Luffy, right? Right. He was so dead set on this one thing. Nothing's gonna deter him from it, right? A lot of people, like, they'll they'll run into an obstacle and be like, it ain't for me. Right. But they'll like they'll find any form of obstacle or hardship and they'll be like, uh, I think it's challenging me and I don't like that. Right. I'll just go. Because, like, cause, but like also they they haven't put in half the thought that Luffy has put into becoming a pirate. The like, thought, or even the like, even the, the determination, yeah. right? Willpower, right? Yeah. That fool is like, I will get smacked down by Whitebeard's by the stuff. Like, I will die on my path to fucking being the pirate king, and everyone will know that. Right. It won't be because like I was trying to do other shit, or I had another priority. My top priority is this. Everything else falls below it, and I'll. But it's all working towards that direction of pirate. King. Right, you know, and that's and that's actually like a beautiful note to end it on yeah. because that's a fact. Yeah. And on that all note, about that willpower, man. All about that willpower. And on that note, earn your conqueror's hockey. It's your boy Maui and your boy Waffles, and this is Cow Surfing. Peace.